Warning! The following podcast contains strong language, which some listeners may find offensive. If you do, I'm yours! Hello, welcome to the Untitled Wrestling Podcast. We are back, baby! I am Jay, joined as usual by Faye, and returning from something of a hiatus, Troy. Hello. Hello. Hi, Troy. Hi. How how are we all? Good. Good. Well. Um, Very well. I'm on like Um, I'm on like week three of like going to wrestling shows, so I'm getting to I'm I'm starting to hit that wall. (laughs) He's on a roll. I haven't even done one this year yet. Too many already. Um, <laughs> yeah, so speaking of wrestling, let's just kind of address the elephant in the room, which is obviously the allegations towards a certain Vincent Kennedy McMahon. Vincenzo. Um, we, we kind of had a lot of thinking about this, whether how we were going to approach it, whether we were going to approach it. We kind of come to a decision, at least for the time being, we're not really going to cover WWE until we see some kind of change in the culture there where abuse isn't normalised. Yeah, um, obvi- obviously Vince McMahon's gone, John Laurinaitis is gone. Um, there's still a lot of kind of not not good stuff happening in regards to that. Obviously that we'll see where that got, that ends up in internal investigations and whatnot. But we kind of thought we wanted to, for the, for at least for the time being, take a step back from covering WWE because it felt a bit weird yeah. covering it. Um, we are going to talk about a lot of different wrestling, a lot of alternatives. If you literally listen to us for covering WWE, hope you understand. If you want to not listen to us because of that, it's fine. Um, but we will be covering other wrestling. As I say, we'll, we're going to kind of assess the situation at a later date but currently it feels a bit weird covering it um, and the main thing is that I want to kind of leave it on is that I hope the victims of Vince McMahon get the day in court with that yeah, monster absolutely. If, you, if you want to know more about Vince McMahon uh, my favourite podcast Behind the Bastards did a six parter on him called Vince McMahon History's Greatest Monster that should tell you all you need to know about Vince McMahon um, but for, from let's move on from that now. I uh, just wanted to kind of put that out there as a disclaimer for anyone who was listening for WWE News. Sorry, we're not covering it. Hope you understand. We are still going to cover some really cool stuff around wrestling. And um, yeah, let's get to it. Without further ado, let's do it. So um, where where would you guys like to start in the world of wrestling? Oh. Should we do some news? Oh, can I actually ask? Yeah. Troy, what have you been up to in terms of... Because I feel like we haven't had a chance to um, catch up. Uh, I've just been filming a lot of shows. Uh, I've been working for Sovereign Pro, <clears throat> SWW, uh, Resurgence, uh, gosh, who else? FPW... Uh, PW, loads of promotions. So many three Maybe letters. Just filming. So many three letters. <laughs> lots of three letters. It, Unless you're it, SWW, it who, who, SWW, where they call themselves SWW Wrestling, but SWW stands for Southwest Wrestling. So it's, so it's Southwest Wrestling sw- Wrestling. Sw- sw- <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, just doing that. It's been fun. Uh, it's really good. Um, it's interesting to, to kind of watch it from the other side, still as a fan. Um, but almost be a, a part in kind of crafting the the stories and stuff like that, and 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 seeing it literally through a lens, uh, and really trying to give it that that dynamic feel. So it's been good. It's really good. But uh, I'm being a little more selective this year, um, which means more of me on the podcast. So got that to put Yay. up with. Oh, yeah. oh, what a shame! <laughs> Can I ask you a question about That's what you're doing? doing. Um, do you hmm. find once now that you film it, do you find it harder to like concentrate on the action as you're not like sitting there as a fan? 
because you're worrying about filming or um, or do you find that you can enjoy it like the same or how's that? I don't enjoy it as much. No, no, not that's that's not right. I don't not enjoy it as much. I find it more difficult to focus because I'm I'm focusing on one specific mm-hmm. element of the match and more often than not I'm filming with someone else. So they're there yeah. to cover up what I can't film. If I'm watching it as a fan, <clears throat> a spectator, what have you. I'm all over the place looking what's going on and stuff like that. Whereas you look at it literally through a lens and you kind of very specific what you're looking at, but also still being aware of the surroundings just in case you need to move and capture that. So yeah, it's, it's quite different. Um, and you kind of, I think when you work with the the talent and understand the story that they're trying to tell, not just outside of the ring, but obviously in the ring as well, and filming that, you you certainly kind of perceive it differently. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, it's it, it's really cool to to see how it unfolds in the ring, and kind of knowing on occasions kind of what's coming up, you know, what's what spots here and there, and this that and the other, um, and really being able to kind of try and film that as cinematically as possible. Um, yeah, it, it's given me a new appreciation of of wrestling. That's for sure. Knowing a lot more of the mechanics and stuff that go into it, so. Yeah, it's really fun. It's it's yeah, just a very different perspective. So then when I actually get on the rare occasions to go and watch a show that I'm not working on, um, yeah, I literally just kind of let my hair down and not have to worry. <laughs> literally but then I let do your find myself down. and it's <laughs> yeah, yeah. But then I I do find myself every now and again just being like, Oh, that cameraman probably should have positioned himself there for that. And I'm like, I'm not working, I'm not filming it, I can't be I doing have this. Friends who are sound then... engineers who say they can't go to live events anymore. Because the setup yeah. of like audio and stuff drives them insane. Just they just critique yeah. everything. Natalie's <laughs> the same with me. And, me and Natalie are watching wrestling. She's just like, they're extensions. <laughs> That's a wave. I'm like, just just enjoy the match. <laughs> just enjoy the match. But she's the same the same to watch it. And I go, that shot was out of focus. Ah, oh, they should have framed that better. She's like, just enjoy it. So I have to step back every now and again and just stop critiquing yeah. everything. <laughs> yeah, that's understandable. <laughs> um so I tell you what, seeing, seeing as we seeing as you asked Troy what he what he's been doing, Faye, should we talk about what you got up to earlier in the <sighs> month? Well, earlier in January. Yeah, I was about to say it. Oh, it, a month ago I was oh, uh, you really depressed uh, me now, Jay. Thanks. <laughs> oh, oh, don't worry, TM Faye's oh, no. coming. Oh um, god. Don't don't think just because Tacey isn't here, you're not getting a fucking you're not getting a, a double dose you know, of that. One day I'm gonna <laughs> I'm uh, I'm gonna talk about this like and just cry to someone i, I am it's I, I actually changed this week's one because it upset me oh thank much. god I, I had something and it was like no it, it wasn't more generation it, me was it because i don't think i can deal with that price if if, if it no. upset you what do you think it was going to do to Faye? <laughs> it, it, it was it was someone who's beloved by the three of us oh and god I, was like, I can't do that yet and it, Oh, I okay, need to okay. mentally prepare the yet myself for worries that. me because it's like you're not not gonna cover um, it. You just have to mentally prepare well, yourself yeah, to someday, ruin me. Someday. It's not gonna it's not gonna take me that long to mentally prepare oh, myself. Like, it's gonna on. take a week, isn't it? Um, <laughs> so yeah, let's uh, talk about what you did start a month, which was Wrestle Kingdom. Um oh. I'll I'll go through the results very you did you went yeah. the whole show, didn't you? Then Yeah, I did. Like miss like the uh, the pre show or anything. Um, no, no, no. We were there from from the start. That's good because I missed the pre-show. <laughs> it was very good, actually. The rumble was nice. Yeah. Um. So that was won by uh, Great Okan, Taru Yanu, Taji Shimori, and Yo. Uh, yeah. The the traditional um New Japan Rambo, which yeah. is basically a battle royal with four winners, and then the the four winners are in the finals of the King of Pro Wrestling for 2024. Um. Also, Takashi. Azuka came back, didn't he? He did, and the arena. I did. I, to be fair, I didn't know who he was, but like the reaction was like, "Oh my god!" He, like he's he retired a couple of years ago. He was a member of Suzuki Goon, who right. basically just like his old gimmick was that he'd gone mental and he had like foil on his hands and he thought they were claws. Um, but okay. he, he was fuck? he was fucking he was yeah. fucking nuts. But he's boss. He <laughs> was really good. To be fair, um. I was really gutted that I didn't get to see Suzuki. He wasn't on this show I was at all. Shocked Suzuki yeah. wasn't on Red. I thought he was going to be on the pre-show because usually that's what happens. He is usually in that match. Yeah. Um, 
But yeah, other, oh, saw overall, her on the day before, like, so it was fine. Did you got to meet Mayor the Granddad himself? Um, yeah. Uh, next up, we had the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Team Championships. Uh, this War Dogs so versus good. Catch Two Two. New champs yeah. as well, wasn't it? Catch Two Two. Champs. How good did weird? Driller look though? Mm. Was it weird seeing Driller in the uh, Tokyo though? Yeah, yeah, it really <laughs> was. Like. It's one of those things, you know, where like you like you think back to like GCW weekends and like kitties and stuff like that, and it's like, me, well, me and me and Big Tasty were talking about this uh, after all, in like how weird it was seeing Nick Wayne and Wembley after seeing him in like Fusion, yeah, <laughs> or not, not Fusion, um, Hanger. It was yeah. like it's so odd to see like someone like it's boss to see them that like got to that stage, but it's it's so jarring just to kind of go. Oh. It's you. It's, <laughs> it's mental. Yeah. I've, it like... I've, I've high fived you. <laughs> yeah. Like to the, the thing about Driller, like last year <clears throat> I was filming him for Wrestling Resurgence in front of a crowd of like 160 people. And then there he is in the Tokyo Dome. Like it's just, it's mental. Yeah. And like he's open in the Tokyo Dome as well. Like that yeah. first match. Yeah. Like so cool. So, so cool. And, and did he have a, a mad Kurt armband on as well? Yeah, he did. He did, yeah. And Lovely stuff. he looked, his, the gear was incredible to match the oh, him, belts. I was going to say him and Clark had white, all white gear, didn't he? Oh, it was so good. You know you know our feelings on, on all white gear. Like, we, anytime someone comes out and it, it's just chef's kiss. Chef's white, kiss. White, white gear pops for the camera. Yeah. Um, nice. Beautiful. Boys. Um, nice. By the way, these tickets send us were up. only... Send us that picture over, I'll each. stick it up on the side. I will, <laughs> yeah. These tickets are yeah. only 50 quid each, by the way. Damn. For, nice. And, like, the seats are incredible. We got them, like, two days before the event. Mm. Um, like, cool. direct That's from class. New Japan. It was really good. Mm. As I say, uh, next up, we had the new president in New Japan, uh, President Ace himself, Tanahashi. Go going into yes. Going into business it? for himself. And yeah, yeah. And Zach did that Jarrett yeah. Buffen? <laughs> Yeah. Puts himself so strong. Uh, I, I, I can't wait for Planet Tanner. Planet Tanner? Planet Tanner? Oh, God. Uh, we, we've, we've already had Tanahashi and... Oh, no, we've not covered Tanahashi and TNA, have we? Oh, that'll be a, that'll be a fun no. little trip down memory lane. Oh. Uh, all three, like, minutes of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, Tanahashi, new, um, new TV champion. It was such uh, a good match. Was a good it was. Match. Zack Sabre Jr. just likes trying to rip Tanahashi's knee off. Um, yeah, it was like, here's, here's how I'm going to make you into a pretzel today. Like, Yeah. Um, next up, we had uh, Yuya Nomura defeating Yota Suji, which so, I'd, forgotten, I'd forgotten it happened. <laughs> that was sad. I, you, I'm sure you blamed Matthew for this. I don't know why, but I'm sure you did. Oh no! no I, it, I blamed it was because all else. of my favorites were losing. Else. You did, but it's because all of I, my favorites were losing. That's why. Y- Yota Suji is my fucking guy. I'm, I was gutted he lost this. Um, his entrance was incredible. Yeah, his gear is fucking great. Yeah, you, you saw Yota Suji as a, a young lion, didn't you, Troy? At Royal Quest. Yes, I did. Uh, yeah, you, yeah, you, yeah. He filled him for a uh, Jonah because Jonah got signed by WWE. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was uh, what a weird. Sort of, um, 2022, yeah. Substitute. Young Lion Suji versus a uh, versus Ishii, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Our, yeah. our Andy saw him two weeks later in CMLL in a battle royal as no a young way. lion. <laughs> That's <laughs> fun. Um, nice. Yeah, this this feud's carrying on, so we'll I'm sure we'll keep with that one. Um, next up, uh, Noah versus House of Torture match. But yeah, was... you, love ha- you love House of Torture, don't you? Do your favourites? No. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm still, I'm still so angry at Ren Narita's and House of Torture. Yeah, um, it's a nice little feud for him um, shooters to have, though. But I think they probably could have but, put him in any other faction, he, and he'd be well, fine. Shooty bo- bollocks is a feud with someone else, isn't he? Um, yeah. So, uh, Kaito Kiyomiya and Rio o- Oya. Have I said that right? Um, no, it was Kaito. Sure. Kiyomiya and um, Shota Umino. He came out on a little quad bike. It says Rio Aware on uh, Fightful. 
that show. Oh, shit, yeah, the show's there. That shows how good my memory is. <laughs> you came out on a little quad bike. Uh, yeah, great. well, House, House of Torture won, so that didn't go well, did it, Faye? It didn't. Uh, it didn't. All that, of my favourites was... lost. That's what that happened was when on this paper. Like, you were full on, like, fuming. I remember that. Yeah. Um, fuming. Fuming. Next up, uh, Shingo Takagi lost the Never Open Weight Championship <laughs> to Tabatonga for reasons. Mental. Absolutely um, fucking mental. To make you sad personally. <laughs> <laughs> um, I like Tamatonga, but what the fuck is this? Yeah, I know. And then T- Tamatonga announced he was leaving New Japan straight right on the day. Out. On the day, <laughs> absolute scumbag behaviour. Um, yeah. Uh, did you see? Uh, you didn't see the Zigglers showing up, did you? No, I-, I saw them on commentary, and then like I just caught them. Um, I caught the bit after when they were fighting through the crowd because they were right by where we were. Well, yeah, because like they basically Ryan and. Uh, Nick Nemeth shown up and like we were all on Discord going oh my god and Faye was like what's going on? Yeah. <laughs> what's happening? <laughs> <laughs> I think had, had you had you uh, Matthew gone to the toilet or something? Like, yeah I took was... Matthew to the toilet because there's no breaks and Matthew was like Matthew was like right I'm done now like he was happy because um, Tamara won and then I just heard the... everyone going oh my god and I was just the like the brothers what? Nemeth yeah. Yeah. And what was like a super weird swerve. So uh they did a after this they did IWGP tag team championships and New Japan strong open weight champion tag championship unification match, uh Bishamon versus Gorillas of Destiny, which was Hikaleo and El Fantasma, because now they're a faction. Um and, Reasons. Uh, it's weird that they've kept yeah. the name. Yeah, I I I guess it's because Hikaleo's their brother. And Tangelo is knocking about still, isn't he? What's when he's he doing? Not like uh, he's not doing recovering anything. from like his knee exploding. I think. Oh, yeah, he is probably. badly injured, isn't he? He's been out um, for, like almost two years. Uh, yeah, new. Uh, well, God won this one. Um, I mean, I, I love ELP, so I'm okay with this. Like, yeah. I mean, Bishamon's entrance fucks as well. Let's just it did. Let like the, it's literally like they've just like gone to Yoshihashi like. Hiroki Goto is really cool. Be like more like Hiroki Goto. <laughs> I like just give him like a fucking staff and told him to start like murdering people on the next. Speaking of good entrances, though, Catch Twenty Two's entrance was amazing at Wrestle Kingdom. Oh yeah, um, <sighs> TJP came dressed as the Aswang, didn't he? Yeah, Which yeah, because a... he'd just been buried in a coffin. He'd obviously <laughs> he just lost a coffin match. To yeah, he looked awesome. Um, War Dogs. So the entrance was fantastic. Spooky yeah. TJP. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um for anyone who doesn't know, the Aswang is a uh, I believe it's Filipino. Mm-hmm. Um which would make sense because TJP is part Filipino. Mm-hmm. Um cryptid. Yeah. Yeah. Is meant to be like some kind of ghoul. Anyway, it, um speak- it, Oh god. This match was so good. This match but was. I was- I, I'm there's there's two matches on this card I was desperate to talk about. This was one of them. Oh. Um, un, until the match after this was comfortably match of the night. Yeah. Uh, Hiromu Takahashi versus El Desperado because they just like killing one another. Um, mm-hmm. and Despy got the win, which was beautiful. Yeah, and I, um, I had the full fear that uh, Despy was losing this. Takahashi is like. It's like an acid trip when he comes out, isn't it? Like, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, I I remember the first time I saw Takahashi properly wrestle was at a Ring of Honor show in Liverpool. Oh my god! And he, he did, he did the time bomb onto Dalton Castle and like nearly killed him on the fucking barrier. Oh my god! <laughs> what are you doing, Hiromu? <laughs> Leave that peacock alone! Um, Literally. Yeah. Is that why he's is... so colourful now? Because he absorbed all his power. Probably. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, uh, th- this is awesome. Um, they were just like kicking out of like all the finishes. Um, yes, he was so good in this match, though. Yeah, yeah, this is the best non-death match match I've seen Despy do for quite some time. Yeah. Um, not not to say that's a bad thing. Like I enjoy Despy doing death matches quite a lot. It felt oh. like he hadn't got back to normal form though, like in his other matches since those death matches. Yeah, I think it, it, 
Deathmatch Despy is like a different animal to yeah. Super Junior Despy. Yeah. And Super Junior Despy is fucking wild when he's like like fully going. Uh, yeah, this this was ridiculously good. Uh, as was the triple threat we got, which I was not expecting to be as good as it was. Um, I I was really worried that it was going to be awful because of David Finley. Um, ah, David right. Finley's great. David, just, David I'm Finley not sold gets too on much David shit. Finley at all. I'm David not. Finley's a good guy. He he praised Aaron for being an honourable Englishman. Um, <laughs> and I I I thought Aaron was going to jump the barrier when he said that, but uh, <laughs> there we go. Uh, uh, I'd have fucking found out if he did. <laughs> Mox's Jason Todd entrance was amazing. That was very cool. Mm. The um, Osprey's Assassin's Creed entrance, unbelievable. Also, also very good. Assassin's um, Creed. Dressed as Jacob Pry. The funniest thing was in, in the press conference the day before, he was like, Yeah, here's some alcoholic beers. I'm I'm putting forward a truce between me and you, Mox, that we just beat up David Finley. That's exactly what they did. Yeah, yeah. It was so good. <laughs> yeah. Um also we got the meme of Alex Coughlin going through the table and being stuck in it. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I, I thought it was great. I thought David Finley looked like an absolute star coming out of this. Um, Mox and Osprey, pretty much like a ready-made feud now for when Osprey shows up in a yeah. AW. When when Mox has done like declaring war on Mexico, like he did this week, yeah, um, he'll start it. He'll start it. He'll, he'll just he'll just decide he's going to fuck around with Osprey. Um, yeah, after this match as well, um, David Finley got into Nick Nemeth's face, and they had like a big brawl. Nick yeah, Nemeth that's what I saw. Jumped over the, jumped over the table in the uh, press conference as well. Um, Basically, where we were sat, we were sat facing where you nowhere know, everyone leaves after the matches, the ramp, the, the like walkway mm-hmm. that they walk down that was like facing us. Nice. Um, yeah, so we've got Nick Nemeth and David Finley happening next week, I believe. Yeah. Or is it this week? It's soon. New beginnings. It's yeah, but which new beginnings? Which new beginning is it? The one at the end of the month or the one at the start of the month? Um, is it the two... same one that Brian's on? I know they're he's on Windows uh, as well. No, the one that Brian's on is uh, Osprey's last match, the War Games. Right, um, okay. Speaking of Brian, let's talk about Danielson versus Carter because fuck me. Um, I almost um, Tom was like, I thought you were going to get into a fight with some Japanese kids. Like small children <laughs> during this, like were you calling them amateurs and spitting on them like Brian Daniels? I, sh- I shut up. Um, they were all cheering for Okada, and I was like, no. Uh, like, a Okada yeah. a, a in the domes, just like next level, though, isn't he? I felt um, silly for thinking that Brian was going to win. I really did. Nah, you never I bet against Okada at Wrestle nah, Kingdom at all. Okada do doesn't lose in the dome, not much anyway. It only um, took it took two rainmakers though, not one. It's, his, two. Entrance, his entrance, his entrance was very cool though. Um, mm-hmm. With the, he had like that uh, UV jacket that he got. Like obviously, he had like the UV go all over, and it yeah. went from being like white to like multicolored. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, that was very very good. I feel like they're gonna do a third one in AW soon. I mean, Don't can we when. not? Because Brian, Brian is fine, and. He doesn't need to be broken again. And he he, he doesn't need to beat Okada again. He's already done it. He was just doing it as like a bit of a courtesy to Okada. Yeah. Um it's like a like a signing on bonus to AEW. Yeah. More on that later. Um <laughs> and in the main event, uh Sonada lost his IWGP World Heavyweight title to Naito. Uh I this felt was... bad for Sonada because this is the most he felt like a star holding that belt. The crowd were fucking electric for this. And then whoosh. And yeah. he lost about. I, I think him I understand why he didn't win, but I feel like him beating Naito would have probably been like what kind of like cemented them. Mm. Yeah. But uh yeah. Overall, good uh Wrestle Kingdom Faye, how was it for you? It was amazing. Uh, um Tom said I was a problem because I kept shouting for Moxley very loud. And it was very quiet. So, you know, if you just hear it, oh, yeah. that's probably yeah, you're me. Not, you're not meant to do that. <laughs> I told you, though. 
It's fine, though, is it? <laughs> it's you, fine. You're meant to be quiet and respectable to the fans. Yeah, it wasn't happening. Mox was there. Andrilla. <laughs> um, what was your um, favourite match? It's a tie between the triple threat and Danielson and Okada. But I think the secret option is Driller, is in okay. is War Dogs versus I, Catch-22, to be honest. I was going to say the secret option is uh, Hiromu versus Despy, to be honest. I was fucking um, insane. I think for me personally, it just felt like a massive deal to watch. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's fair. Um, but yeah, it was amazing. I highly recommend if anyone ever gets the chance to go because it was yeah. unbelievable. How was the rest of Japan good? Yes, Mario World was amazing. Um, Osaka was super fun, and we had so much food. Like, so much food was at, and lots nice. of Pokemon were caught. Rude nice. not to. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, Troy, any any matches that you enjoyed the most on the old uh, wrestling kingdom? Uh, Feels like forever ago, doesn't it? It does, not it? Yeah. Tanahashi it and um, Sheppy Zack was decent. Enjoyed that. Um, main event was good. I was surprised that Sonata lost, but... Yeah, it was still decent. Um, and yeah, obviously, Driller. Just Driller generally in the Tokyo, yeah. which is really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Brian Akkad is still my match of the year currently. So uh, that's all I need to say about that uh, for now. <laughs> I think there was a cheeky little one on Saturday that's been my favourite match. Was that? Uh, on, was that... So- on Sunday, sorry. But was in that for different year. reasons, though? It was just a fucking amazing match. Talking about Pudding Jordan Oliver. I was going to say, was oh. that Pudding Jordan Oliver? Oh good my old, God. Good old Pud. Good old it was pud. so good. Yeah. And then I had about five people come up to me go, your reaction when Pud came out was the funniest thing ever. And I'm like, was everyone just watching? Because <laughs> they knew that I didn't know. Because <laughs> I just lost my shit. But yeah, it was amazing. Well done, Pud. Well done, Pud, indeed. And he broke uh, Jordan Oliver. Not really, but Jordan Oliver was like in I, so I, much I, pain. <laughs> I, I, I spoke to Pud yesterday and he said that Jordan beat the shit out of him. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that was a two way street. Um yeah. so yeah, let, let's keep let's keep on New Japan while we're talking about it. Um mm-hmm. so obviously um new beginnings coming up. Uh another match got added to the Currently, huge card, which is obviously across two days, which includes su- such matches as Nick Nemeth versus David Finley, um, Brian Danielson versus Zack Sabre Jr. too, uh, the Brianing. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, Have you seen Suji the promos there. that Zack's been given in New Japan? Uh, he, he can run his mouth all he wants. Brian's going to fucking knee his jaw off again. Um, <laughs> Dragon bollocks. Uh, you, uh, uh Amora versus Yota Suji in a hair versus hair match. That's gonna uh, either way we both lo- we, we lose whoever wins that because they both have oh, gorgeous you, hair. You use losing that. Suji ain't using losing that head of hair. Um <laughs> and also uh the Bullet Club War Dogs versus the United Empire in a war games match, which is the first time a cage match has been done in New Japan in about 30 years, I believe. That's mad. Nice, nice. Um yeah, that's Will Ospreay's final match in New Japan. Mm-hmm. That should be very, very good. Uh, oh, uh, Matt Riddle versus Tanahashi as well, but don't worry about that. No, thank you. Um, yeah, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, I can't remember the dates off the top of my head. I believe it's the 11th and the 24th, if I'm not mistaken. It is the 11th, uh, yeah. That's when the cage matches. So that is next Monday, and the 24th is the Sunday after. Um, oh, that means for, I can watch it while I'm in work. Great. Yeah. Same. Not that I do that, but same. Yeah, uh, I know. Like, it'd be a terrible thing. Not but, that I never know, do it. that, but same. Absolutely. <laughs> um, And then I believe Osprey is going to be showing up on Dynamite the following week, isn't he? Yeah. And, um, yeah. Um, it's, it's a, 
New Japan's a bit exciting at the minute, isn't it? Like with the things they've got coming up. New Japan? Yeah. Depends how much like they kind of rely I hope on. They book it properly, like, but well, I think the thing is with like New Japan in the last couple of years, for me, it's felt like a not stagnant, but like a little bit stale at times because they use the same whereas, people. Yeah, so like they used to like kind of rely on like the working relationships a lot more than they have been in previous years. Like obviously they had the working relationship with Ring of Honor, which meant they had all like the guys like the elite and um Adam Cole used to go over there quite a lot. Kyle O'Reilly used to go over there a fair bit. Um just to name a few. And then obviously CMLL as well. They use a lot of talent there. And then for whatever reason, whether it be the pandemic or what I know that the um some of the uh, like new owners were a bit or new presidents were a bit funny about it. Um they just stopped kind of using outside talent. And it seems like since Tanahashi's like taken over, which was like near the end of last year, wasn't it? Yeah, the Wrestle Kingdom, wasn't it? Like just before. Is it no, it was a like week a before, couple of yeah. days before. Hmm. Yeah. Um he basically it was just like you, you're starting to see now they're using a lot more kind of outside talent and relying on the like work and relationships you've got with companies like AW, obviously Ring of Honor's AW still, uh, CMLL as well. So it's cool to see that they're actually like utilizing those relationships a bit more. Yeah. So yeah, it, even it is like booking Kiyomiya for like Wrestle Kingdom as well. Yeah. Well, there's obviously the United J- uh, Japanese Wrestling, whatever it is. Uh, I can't remember the full name of it, but it's. Basically, all the Japanese wrestling companies. Oh, is that the the, the thing they formed a little while about where it's all of them and they've got like an umbrella company? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So like all Japan, New Japan, um, yeah. DDT, Noah, DDT, Noah, yeah, um, Stardom in there, Stardom, Tokyo Joshi yeah. Pro, Tokyo Joshi Pro, yeah, a couple of others. Um, but yeah, they, and that's that's going to continue to grow as well. They've said with like another weird support. thing as well is how how like big it is over there. You know, like. You know, the way you see like loads of like sports over here, and it's like cricket and rugby, and like on the billboards, it's just wrestling. Like, yeah, mm. it's just mad. Like, yeah. it it's insane as well that like a car does not like the megastar in his relationship. His wife so is so funny. The the can <laughs> the concern on Twitter was is his wife going to go to America? Well, um, let's let's pivot to Kazuchika Okada very quickly. Um, obviously, his he decided to leave New Japan at the end of his contract. He is his well, his contract expired on the first of February. He's got one final match with Tanahashi on the, I believe it's the eleventh of Feb as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he is off into the wild world. Um, Sad Okato noises. Ah, uh, don't you worry about that. Okato's coming. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Kazuchika Okada. I believe you've done this. Talks, <laughs> he's held talks with both WWE and AEW. Uh, AEW have said they are confident in that he's going to join them, having fielded a substantial offer. Um, obviously, didn't they make also... a trademark as well? Didn't they put a trademark into something? Yeah. Uh, so he's trademarked a um, Akato. Um, oh. <laughs> um, so he's trademark Rainmaker um, and other stuff for merchandising as well. Uh, he's also signed on with Barry Bloom, who is quite a notable wrestling agent. Uh, he gets like a lot of like big wrestling contracts. He's Osprey's agent. He's uh, the Elite agent, Hangman Page, Cody Rhodes. Um, so he, he represents quite a lot of people who have kind of been to or had ties with AEW, and obviously. Are looking to kind of like make sure they can secure their own copyrights for their own merchandise and purposes as well. So that again is another, not a definite, but it's another indicator. It's probably more towards AEW, obviously as well with the kind of freedom of being able to not have to move to America. He can just come in, do his dates in AEW, go back, to, go back home, come back. Bit of a take a bit of a toll on his body, but obviously if he can make it work. Someone like a carder as well, he could be used as an attraction. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, he, he could literally be used as, like, a guy you bring in for, a, like, a pay-per-view or, like, a couple-of-week program. Um, and he'd still he'd still feel exciting. Um, so that that's interesting. Um, looking forward to see where he lands, like where he lands uh, there. Isn't that um, like what they planned to do with Kota before? Like his life became like a bloody Kota game before he broke both his ankles and decided to wrestle on them. You mean? <laughs> yeah, and then, and then go to a clinic and, that scammed him that's... instead of getting surgery. Is honestly. His life is like is like a video game. It doesn't make I, sense. Kota K- Ibushi needs a fucking handler. Um, Honestly, because Kenny's not there now. Like he, ne- he needs someone to just like tell him stop being a fucking lunatic. We should have just known for... this when he tried to go to Japan with, when he tried to go to America with just a sandwich in his bag and like that was it and got lost and went back home. <laughs> like that should have been the sign. He's got no brain cell. No, I, I mean I've seen that thing. That like thing with him and Tanahashi where he can't figure out how to use a pen. Yeah, and he says he's gonna live like forever and he can do like I think I think he said he can fit like more he's... than a day's hours into 24 hours. And it's like I wanna know how his brain works. He, he did he did say he can figure out how to have a 25 hour day. I don't know yeah. how, but, but don't worry about what, it. It's fine. What drugs is this man on? He's not, he's uh, just pure himbo, it, like undiluted. I, I, I think he's just generally just a soft lad. Yeah. <laughs> soft shite. He's just the epitome uh, of a soft shite. He's just him, um, though. Or who can kick you really fucking hard. Yeah. You, don't say, I, you don't say it to him. I ain't going to tell him he's a soft lad. <laughs> so let's uh, let's just wrap up the last two bits of Japanese wrestling news we've got here. Um, so let's... Um, Mention obviously they've got Windy City Raya um coming on the fourteenth of April. Uh I was telling Troy just before we started. So far there are two matches announced, one that's been heavily teased. Um two that have been announced are Mustafa Ali versus Hiromi Takahashi, which That's gonna be probably, amazing. Probably yeah. gonna be a match of the year contender right there. Um mm. and John Moxley versus Tetsu Unito for the IWGP heavyweight Tam- championship. That's wild. Like, no build. Uh, They're just like, no, let's do it. Fuck it, have that. Just put but the belt also, on Mox. It'd be really funny. For the long. Also, um, ju- just for the, the lols indeed, because it's in Chicago, Jack Perry is making his new Japan debut. <laughs> Real glass. Scapegoat. Oh, Scapegoat Jack River. Perry, as they've been calling him in New Japan. Um, oh. So he... He made his debut at uh, Battle in the Valley by attacking Shota Rumino. I'm he sure Mox pre- is going to be so fine with that. He then proceeded to rip up his AW contract. So, you know, it's like he's targeting Mox at this point. <laughs> and then he pulled like a, an armband with scapegoat on it and put it on his arm. Um, what I love about this whole thing is that the security just thought he was a fan. Mm-hmm. Didn't know he was Jack Perry. Yeah, he, he had a Bushi mask on, didn't he? Uh. Fucking Luna. So like yeah, he came came out looking like a cult leader. Um, his beard's all grown out. Uh, yeah, he got announced as did uh, Ren Narita and T- Tomohiro Ishii today. Um, also, uh, no no confirmation on his match. It's heavily implied that it's going to be Shota Rumino. Gabe Kidd has also recent like today called out Jack Perry. Um, so maybe, let's see what happens. Maybe, maybe he just needs to take a beating from everybody in order to um, be there. Imagine, <laughs> imagine um, everyone batters him. <laughs> um, what about um? Obviously, there's the news about Driller being injured as well. Yes, uh, I I did mean to mention that when I mentioned the cage actually, yeah. and I just got sidetracked. Uh, yeah, Dan Maloney. Uh, and after War Dogs winning back the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championships, uh. Dan Maloney revealed that he has torn his bicep completely off the bone um, yeah. and plans to still work the match. Um, I mean, I, I, I was talking to you about this the other day, Faye. Like, it's a similar thing to when Cody Rhodes did it with his pec. If it's off the bone, yeah. you can't damage it Injure any further. It yeah. It's as injured as it's going to be. So he's probably just trying to hold off surgery till he can get this like war games match out the way with 
take the it's shit out of It's not the worst that. arm. From apparently, no. it's not like his good arm either. So no. like, well, the other the other thing is like, I mean, you like seen it like years gone by. I remember uh, I think it was Undertaker worked with like that specific injury for about four months, and he was just taping his arm up until like it lo- his arm looked like a fucking beanbag that's been sat on too much. Um, <sighs> God, yeah, that's, that's horrible. <laughs> it, it, it was upset. Deflated beanbag. <laughs> it's just all bunched up there. Um, look, look but, an old yeah. hacky sack. <laughs> yeah. um, very upset, and um, but yeah, hopefully a driller gets um, surgery sorted out soon if he needs it, and a speedy recovery. Please come back to oh. New Japan because you're great at New Japan, like. Well, yeah, it's, it's contract. Well, all of War Dog's contracts are up, aren't they? After a, yeah. the show as well. So, be interesting to see if they're actually going to get re-signed or if they're going to uh, just be like kind of in and out all the time. Yeah. Uh, someone who isn't going to be returning to where they work in Japan is Rossi Agawa, the founder yeah. of Stardom. Um, he got fired this week by Bushi Road for alleged talent poaching um now th- this this is a weird one because it elicited a very sort of weird response from tony khan where he was like fuck you sort of thing i was like oh that's odd and obviously there was talk of like stardom having a working relationship with wwe that was pitched last year um now this talent poaching thing it's all about starting, like, Rossi's starting a new promotion. And yeah. I think that's where it comes from, because I feel like it might be that he's kind of tried to get people who were, were looking at AEW to then go to this new promotion and follow him. And that's where the animosity's come from a bit more. Um, yeah. Or, or, because had or, he not been starting a new promotion, the likelihood is they would have gone to AEW. Yeah, well, it, mm. it sounds it sounds like Julia now might be going to WWE. Um, but what she said though oh, is that she said she's going to follow him for the first couple of months there first. Yeah, because she's uh. the statement was really weird that she put out as well, like about Rossi, like really what, strange. What's weird is he said something about workers' rights in stardom, but I thought he was always a bit dodgy. And, so that's and Stardom were always like, really hesitant on AEW, weren't they? Like on working with them. Well, that was that was fucking one hundred percent Rossi. Yeah, and then um, Tony Khan started posting Sopranos gifts on Twitter. <laughs> he was having a normal one about it. It's fine. I I think um, I've got a feeling based on the way Tony Khan reacted. So Megan Bain is currently signed to an AEW contract, but on excursion in Stardom. I wouldn't be surprised if it's come out that like Rossi's like tried to fucking poach here. Do you think realizing... for his new promotion he wants to work in relationship with WWE with that new promotion? Do, yeah. do you think that new promotion could be NXT Japan? Potentially, yeah. Yeah. There's every possibility. I mm. I don't know. It it sounds he made it sound like it wasn't affiliated to anybody. Okay. He made it sound like it was kind of like just a brand new thing. Uh, I'll just see if we we'll find the statement that he put out. Um, but ba- basically, he, he made he made it sound like, oh yeah, they sat me because I wanted to start a new promotion, and they thought I was like gonna be trying to poach talent. Which, I mean, if you if you've got this working relationship with like an entire roster of talent, you go. By the way, I'm thinking of starting a new promotion. I'm, I'm just starting another interested? promotion. I can see that your contracts are up in three months. <laughs> um, Here's my card. Yeah. Um, I mean, look at look at when AEW started, and obviously, like the timing of that was the elite contract were up. Kenny Omega's contract was up a few months later. Yeah. Um, Lance Archer's contract was up another few months later, and they basically just like they basically they basically like kind of they all opted to move into America as opposed to staying in Japan. Yeah. That so, left a sour taste in New Japan's mouth for a while, though, didn't it? Like, I, that's in why terms it was of like, so... their relationship with Kenny. Yeah, well, that's why it was so hard for them to uh, kind of 
develop that working relationship. Apparently it was uh, Mox that kind of like bridged that gap at that point. Yeah. Um so yeah, what um what Rossi said was I was forced to play aggressive cards. There was harassment within the company that continued and I started to lose the will to continue working here. Because of that, some of the wrestlers and staff told me I'm not joining the organization again. And then he said, a new organization, that's right. I want to do what again what we can't do here. There are quite a few things we can't do here because we are a big company. We can't do everything. So it sounds to me like he's probably going to start a new promotion just like from scratch. He's probably jealous of what he saw. Um, what's that other promotion? Oh, the one with um, the girls, the Japanese girls wrestling one. Tokyo Joshi Pro. No, 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 no. It's the small one. They had that match and they had that event. Event under the highway. Uh, Sendai Girls? Yeah, that's the one. Because that got a really oh, good... He, um, that got a really he, good he, showing. Well, he got bought out, didn't he, by yeah. Bushi Rose. And it was he thought it was like going to be a merger with New Japan, and obviously they're more kind of like treated like a bit of an afterthought to New Japan. Yeah. Um, Not in the sense that they're... They're a bad company because God star them are fucking amazing, but yeah, more because it's New Japan and oh yeah, also we've got this Joshi company here as well that we sometimes will put a bit of a bit more of a spotlight on, but not not give it the spotlight that it should be getting. Absolutely, so, yeah. Well, I thought with last year we'd have got another. Sorry, the year before we'd have got another women's match on on That's Wrestle thinking. Kingdom and we didn't, Fair. and that Fair. pissed me off a bit. Mm. Yeah. Didn't get made a granddad, didn't get a women's match. Um can't think what Why else. Why would Tony Khan do this? No. <laughs> well um <laughs> I, I, I tell you what Tony Khan is doing. Um and that is uh, potentially using very, very exciting. Um because you haven't seen some of that CML talent. Obviously, they've been showcasing them the last week or so. Mox versus Mexico. Mo- <laughs> Mox, is, Mox is basically going on his murder crusade that, of, that he did on Japan in 2021 on Mexico this year. It's so good. Um, his promos just, are hilarious. Fucking Mox and his tour of the territories. Yeah. Right, it's Mexicans he's, this year. Yeah. <laughs> he's, fucking... he's, put a dart, he's put a dart in a map, hasn't he? Like... <laughs> <laughs> There on, yeah. on dynamite this week for anyone who didn't see it, he just got thrown into the crowd during his match against <laughs> um, into the lap of a load of fucking luchadors. Yeah, literally, L- literally, like, there was just like yeah. there was like the four luchadors at ringside. He lands on them, and he gets up and like Mister goes giving him the middle finger. So he's like, "Hey, fuck you!" And, yeah. then, <laughs> and then they're all like fuming about it, and like CMLL start following John Moxley and like going, "Fuck you, Mox." <laughs> on Twitter ah. uh, then after the match they all attack Mox and then Moxie's like oh CMLL I guess you think I'm some soft American wrestler nah I and think what's like, funny <laughs> is that like they made John Moxley pissed off Mexico that luchadors that hadn't previously had Twitter accounts made them S- suddenly just made to them. hail abuse of John Moxley <laughs> Valador Jr. made a made a Twitter account just to fucking say fuck you, John Moxley. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, th- this is very cool. Uh, obviously, as I say, in 2021 we had Mox wasn't really doing much, so we just had a murder like Japanese wrestlers all year, um, which was great. It seems like this year he's get set his sights on Mexico. It's Mexico's turn to feel the yeah. pain. I can't wait for well, it to be England and he just starts turning up at the Indies and like... Oh, imagine. <laughs> <laughs> just just, uh, just t- turns, up, turns up at Infamous and uh, just uh, Death Riders, Lance Rivera and walks off. Oh, that'd be so good. Um, Yeah, so it looks looks like Mox has got a few uh, people he wants to fight in uh, Mystico, Volador Jr., uh, Mascara Dorado and Hechicero, who we'll get to later, because, oh boy. He said um, he was yeah. going to turn up in Mexico as well, didn't he? He was like, he if did, you... He, he said, if 
if I show up in your backyard, then you're probably in trouble, aren't you? Yeah. I, I think, well, we've got BCC um, versus... See, um, they've, ju- they've literally just called it BCC versus CMLL. So, like, just yeah. the promotion. Like, and it's the whole it's, promotion. Uh, <laughs> All of Everyone. it. Everyone. <laughs> it's Volador, uh, Hechicero, and Mascarado Dorada, isn't it? Yeah, and they, they um, didn't they have a match against um, 2.0 and, and Christopher Daniels? And uh, Matt Seidel. Yeah. Uh, all four of them and it was just Hedges Zero like wrapping them all and tying them all in knots yeah uh, like the actual witch that he is <laughs> um, yeah so it looks it looks like we're getting a a little John Moxley murder tour of Mexico which I'm looking forward to uh, it's going to be fun uh, also uh, so New Japan usually around this time of the year or maybe it's just happened and I've just missed it do a uh, fantastic Omania which is like a uh, kind like of like CML. CMLL and New Japan. And it's just all the Lucha Boys. Um, if it's got that kind of energy to it, I'm here for it because that'll be fun as fuck. Um, moving on to another Mexican who we probably won't see at a, a Forbidden Door because I'm pretty sure he's got nuclear heat with CMLL after he walked out of them. Is uh-huh. my boy, my boy Rush El Toro Blanco. Saying on Twitter that he's due back any time now uh, after tearing his hamstring in the uh, Continental Classic and proceeding to work, I think it was four matches. Like, I think he, yeah. I'm pretty sure he did it in the first match and he just taped his leg up and had the fucking brawl with Mox and Swerve. And, and anyone else that decided to hit him, anyone, anyone else who's... that fucking wanted it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I mean. He, he declared war on every faction in AEW before he went off injured. Yeah. So I imagine everyone's in danger. It's just when. <laughs> he'll, he'll get to you eventually. Don't worry. You, you were saying so, about Mox versus CMLL. It's just Roosh versus anyone in AEW that wants everyone, faction, yeah. individual. You're I mean, all Nigel McGuinness. Nigel McGuinness. That's just, <laughs> that's just Roosh on like a daily basis. I think he only likes like five people, and that's his wife. Well, more than five people. But it's his wife, his kids. Prolistico's all right, I suppose. Preston's yeah. okay. Dragon Lee. Likes, it's Dragon Lee likes Jose the Assassin. Um, and that's about it. That's about it. <laughs> he, he did. He did say. Um, he did say there's uh, women's wrestlers He's looked at getting into LFI though, but he, he hasn't said who it is yet. So they've they've got to be extra murdery though. Yeah. So probably Marina. Mark said Shafir. that about Marina. No, Mark said that about Marina Shafir, though, didn't he? Yeah, um, he said fine. that the BCC are going to be showing up in um, Japan more, and Marina Shafir yeah. will be showing up as well on behalf of the BCC. Hmm. Do just, Mar- just... Mox versus Roosh for Marina well, custody of Marina. So uh, Roosh should fuck him up this time. <laughs> uh, um, speaking of someone who's. Was in uh, talks with WWE and now apparently is in deep discussions with AEW. Uh, Camille Brickhouse, the former NWA Women's Champion. Um, it looked like at the start of January she was going to NXT. Uh, came out this afternoon that those talks have fallen through. She's been backstage at a couple of Dynamites now. Uh, if you haven't seen her, she's very good. Is she? I haven't. She's six foot tall. Why. Six foot tall and. Built like a brick shit house. Wow, okay. built like a brick house. <laughs> she she reminds she reminds me a bit of kind of like a cross of China and Charlotte Flair. Oh, okay. Thanks. So. Um, she's she's very good. She, she's very good. Um, mm-hmm. one of she was one of the best things about NWA when uh, she was there. Um, they their loss is another company's gain. Absolutely. I'm, I'm excited to see where she turns up because she's very good. Um, another woman who looks like she's going to be signing for AEW, if not already, well, actually, it more or less pretty much locked in that she's signed already, is uh, Mercedes Monet. Um, she's expected to be announced imminently and um, expected to appear, not debut, appear. So that means she could come sooner. She could, she could just arrive, like debut at Revolution in March. Um it really feels like AEW have finally listened to fans about the women's division. Yeah. Which is a fucking breath oh, of fresh air. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
I mean, it's it's weird because I feel like when whenever they kind of got called out on it, they'd every now and again like give them a showcase and they'd fucking kill it. Yeah, but, but it wasn't. They, cons- it's not consistent. No, no, that, like, that, that's literally yeah, what I was yeah, saying. But yeah. it, it was never consistent. It was like, well, it was appease like, you on this occasion, and then well, platon. it was like the Brit, the Britain Tony, uh, not Britain Tony Stone, Britain Thunder Rosa feud, where they had mm. like the two main events, and it was like, why aren't you doing this more? Like, yeah, and they did it with they did they have done a to be fair they they did they have been trending in a better direction with it. Um. Obviously, they had a lot more women's main events on Dynamite last year than they than they ever had. Um, with obviously like she, they're having matches with uh, Jamie Hayter in the in near the end of twenty twenty two, and obviously there was she she there and Tony Storm, I think, or she there and mm-hmm. yeah, and she there and Slayer as well. Yeah, didn't she and, 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 the... and then we had the street fight as well between um, Ruby and Ruby and Willow and. Um, shit, that was the last year, wasn't it? Yeah, and then yeah. you look at the run that they've given like Athena as well with the Ring of Honor Women's Championship as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and um, obviously, like they've got the um, the Ring of Honor Women's TV title uh, tournament mm-hmm. they're doing there at the moment as well, which is kind of putting more eyes on more like people who deserve eyes on them. Um, it, it's as I say. While it's not the finished article yet, they're definitely moving it in the right direction. Yeah, they just they just need to start putting more than one fucking match on a, a fucking dynamite. Mm. Uh, Someone asked well, um, Britt Baker recently, didn't he? In an interview, like, why aren't you like are you injured? Why aren't you on thingy? And she was like, it's because AEW have listened to the fans when they were like complaining that she was always on. Yeah. And Britt was like, then let other people like showcase. Which I feel like is good for Brits and not like. She had she she was dealing with injuries as well, though, wasn't she? Ma- she yeah, she was uh, getting like massive injections in her back, like when Soraya yeah. debuted, wasn't she? Mm. But uh, yeah, like I, I mean, it's one of them things. I feel like they need to showcase them more on Dynamite, but then on Collision, they're kind of making up for it at times by yeah. putting like two or three women's matches on there. There's usually at least one on rampage as well in that hour that goes longer than it would on would have gotten on uh dynamite or a collision so that's mm-hmm. always it as i say they're, they're making moves in the right direction i think they've got to find the like, happy medium haven't they mm-hmm. well that's it look at it th- look at it this way if they're signing <clears throat> like heavy hitters like the likes of mercedes monet uh camille brickhouse and diana peraza that we just signed they're definitely taking it seriously and going oh yeah well let's Let's bolster this women's division and actually like. Make and Mariah them... May is getting to show her stuff. And as Mariah, well. oh, yeah. she's mm-hmm. so good. Troy, if you haven't had people. a chance, I know who Mariah her. May is. Oh, I just meant like you haven't had a chance to catch her on her aim, um, like in the AEW matches. The yeah, yeah, really I've, I've, I've seen one or two. She is, she's class. She was at um, uh, Royal Quest as well when I went a couple of years back. That was the first time I saw her actually. Yeah, yeah, she yeah. she was in a. Tag team over here as well with Hannah Taylor. Oh yeah. Um. Sign Hannah Taylor. Sign Hannah Taylor, please. Do that. She needs to me. get better soon first, but yeah. Yeah, she's just had a um, heart True. surgery, hasn't she? Mm-hmm. Recovering from that. Hope you get better soon, Hannah. Oh. Yeah. I love Hannah. Um. Yeah, definitely, absolutely. Uh, right. Let me just see what is on the list. Um. MLW. MLW. You want, you want to do MLW first? You're, you're trying to put off TM Faye, is that it? Yeah, that's it. Can you tell? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, let's uh, go to MLW then. Um, I'm just getting the results up. If anyone al- already has them up, feel um, free to take up. I haven't, um, but I can. I know, boom. I know that it... <clears throat> boom. Yeah, I've just got mine. <laughs> Get on us, <laughs> working together. Him. I know <laughs> Kojima dethroned Alex Kane, didn't he? Oh, yeah, he did. yeah. Become the new MLW champion. Uh, that makes me very second, happy. First, first ever two-time MLW champion as well. Oh, really? Yeah, apparently so. Uh, yeah, apparently that was pretty decent. Uh, what else did they have? Uh, um, um, 
Jacob Fatu yeah. and Yuji Nagata. Yeah, yeah. Fatu um, with the win. Uh, Mystico and Averno. So there's that. Uh, yeah, they... Sammy Callahan defeated Akira. Ah. Oh. And then Ray- that makes Raven. Sad. Raven debuting and teaming with Akira. Raven, wow. as in like, yeah. as in Raven. Actu- wow. Yeah. Uh, Caught the Raven. Nevermore. <laughs> uh, Hoss fight. Davy Boy Smith Jr. beat one called Manders. Uh, two out of three falls for the MLW World Middleweight title. Rocky Romero uh, defeated Ichiban. What else happened? Contra are back. Remember yeah. Contra? Um, so proper awesome deathmatch guy, Cruel, has returned to his old gimmick, Mads Kruger. Yeah. It's basically just cruel, but he's South African. Um, yeah. <laughs> and if you if you haven't seen Cruel uh, doing death matches, it's basically like if what if Kane was a death match wrestler and not anti-abortion. Um, he's, oh, okay. he's very good, he's very very good. Red. He, he also he also Faye, You'll like this. Um, well, I, I mean, I, I imagine. Troy I always get worries when you say these things. Um, he also had a tag team with uh, Matt Tremont, but he made Matt Tremont a spooky boy called Killdozer. So nice. It was Matt- it was just Matt Tremont in his normal gear, but with a fucking spooky mask on. Brilliant. Um, yeah. Uh, also, also, El Jefe, Cesar Duran, the former um, former leader of Lucha Underground. Uh, the, the former Dario Cueto from Lucha Underground. <laughs> um, returned. Um, so yeah, we're getting more Azteca Underground stuff, so... Very cool yes, fans. I'm an MLW fan. Um, yeah, man. I, I need to watch more of it. I do I pr- pick up on like matches when I hear they're very good. I don't. I always fans? watch the. I always watch the battle. Don't right? That's always a good laugh. Yeah. Yeah, battle riot's always battle riot's always a good laugh. I think there's uh, a yeah. few of them free on YouTube as well. Actually, if you've not seen yeah. one before, they usually chuck them up on there. It, okay. They've they've got like low. I think it's almost everything's on Fight Plus. Mm. Um, but yeah. Definitely worth checking out. A lot of exciting talent that comes from there. And uh, I look forward to seeing more of them. Um, right, let's get to TNA. Cause... Do you want to do rest, rest of the World or do you want to do TNA? Um, let's, do rest, let's do Rest of the World last because it's more like kind of the sort of, you know, the bits at the end of like of like American news where it's like, and here's this dog riding a bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> So is we'll, that like we'll my soft that. news after like after like yeah, yeah. That's, that's the cushion feel, of the TN Faye. <laughs> I feel like Faye needs something to like uplift her after TN Faye because it's going to upset her. Um, <laughs> so first of all, um, TNA announced their next uh, pay per view after uh, Hard to Kill, which was a fucking great pay per view if you haven't watched mm. it. Um, really enjoyed Hard to Kill. Yeah. Man. Um, so this week, uh, Mustafa Ali debuted in TNA, and. He made he, he didn't fuck around. He, he only called out Chris Saban for an X Division title match. Of course he fucking no did. Uh, their next show, No Surrender, on the 23rd of February. Uh, also, matches confirmed is Jordan Grace versus Giselle Shaw for the TNA Knockouts Championship. Yes, please. Uh, Moose versus Alex Shelley in a rematch from the Hard to Kill main event for the yes, TNA please. World Championship. And then some rumored matches we've got, which haven't been confirmed, but it's what they're kind of leaning into. Is GYV versus ABC for the um, TNA Tag Championships? They've been like cryptids, haven't they? Like just following them around. Well, they they're doing a best out of three series at the moment, and they're one yeah. apiece. Um, next we've got MK Ultra versus Decay in a rematch for the uh, Knockouts Tag Championships. Uh, Nick Nemeth versus Steve Macklin. That's and... absolutely happening. He got in his mm-hmm. face, didn't he? When when Zig went not Ziggler, sorry, when um Nemeth came out week. the other week. Yeah. Yeah. And uh Frankie Kazarian versus Eric Young as well. They've been having like a bit of a feud. also potentially um Big Con, aka Connor from the Ascension. Yeah, yeah. versus uh, Cody Dina. Nice. Um because they split up their team, the design. Yeah. Um so yeah, there's a lot of a lot of stuff going on in TNA. And that's um, all we've got for TNA today, guys. That's fine. No, it is. <laughs> no, 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 it's not. <laughs> I, I, I wanna, I wanna tell you a two-part story, if I, because, okay. 
Big Tasty reminded me of something when I asked him, when I said, shall I do this one? And he was like, yeah, but don't forget, you've got to mention this bit as well, because oh, no. it leads into it. Thanks, Ben. So, Thank you. Let's Thank talk you. about the time that Samoa Joe was abducted by ninjas. Um, God. <laughs> so this was literally, um, it was in the early Hogan Bischoff days. So the glory we talked is. about this already. Don't worry about it. Um, okay. So the Bischoff Home Megaverse had only just started. Um, Samoa Joe so was much. kind of on like a da- a down with a trend after he kind of like picked up like quite a lot of big losses. Um, th- there was essentially Jeremy Borash is doing a backstage interview in the car park, and Samoa Joe was just st- stood there like waiting to cross the road. This van nearly hits him, and he's like, "Wait, what the hell's going on?" And then a load of guys dressed as ninjas come out and throw him in the back of the van, and then just fuck off. And this was after Samoa Joe had just lost to Orlando Jordan. Remember him, Troy? I do. Um, former WWE US champion. He looked like um, a really hench, dizzy rascal. Well, he he did in WWE. Yeah, we'll get to him in TNA in a minute. Um, <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, so Samoa Joe lost to Orlando Jordan um, in what was a shock loss. Uh, got abducted, and then essentially all the baby faces. Th- this was meant to be like a repackaging for Samoa Joe, so he was meant to come back as like a psycho character. Um, that didn't happen because all the top baby faces got injured, so they had to just bring Samoa Joe back as like a top baby face. Um, but for Orlando Jordan, it was a little bit more interesting, Faye, because. Um, he he also went off telly for two months, and he came back as evil bisexual Orlando Jordan. Um, what? What? So basically, uh, Hulk Hogan and Eric Bischoff found out that Orlando by bi- Orlando Jordan is legitimately bisexual. So they gave him a gimmick where he was essentially like a sexual deviant. Um. So he you're came lucky out- that you're telling this story to me and not Nat, like. <laughs> Because she just threw her hands. Oh, yeah. like <laughs> I mean, it was Hulk Hogan who did it. Like That you know, doesn't me. surprise me at all. Um, So, yeah, uh, Orlando Jordan came back. Uh, he'd grown, like, dreadlocks, and he had, like, all, like, eyeshadow on. And he came out and just just wearing, um, like, police tape that said cr- TNA crossed the line on it. And uh, he, he'd set his sights on the current TNA global champion Rob Terry, who was a big Welsh lad. Um, I remember Rob and, Terry. Yeah. Then uh, then one week he comes out and he uh, starts like basically covering himself in cream under a black light. <laughs> so it glows. Is this where and, like BT got like a lot of their inspiration from? Don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, he also had a boyfriend and a girlfriend who'd come out with him. Uh, and he'd do a lot of deep kissing on the stage while trying to trying to get Rob Terry to join in in their fun. Um, th- this ended in Rob Terry basically just murdering evil bisexual Orlando Jordan. Um, well, you know he's bisexual; he can't win anything clearly. <laughs> and, and, well, and then he then after that, uh, after doing what nothing with him, what seemed like for a couple of months, he comes back to join a tag team with Eric Young, whose gimmick at the time was he had. Mental problems because he had too many head injuries. Um, and he didn't realize that Orlando Jordan was trying to fuck him. So the tag team was uh, Eric Young was like a guy with a head injury, and Orlando Jordan was like beasting on him, trying to get in his bed. Oh, wow. Eric, Eric Young was like, Oh, he's just my good friend. And then uh, the, it didn't work. They gave Eric Young a singles push, and not on came of it. Um, yeah. So, you know, like when usually you tell me these TNA segments and they're upsetting yeah. because of bad writing. This well, is like just writing. genuinely upsetting. Like, yeah. Um, fun, wow. fun fact Orlando Jordan went on, I think it was went on or had just come off having a match with the Ultimate Warrior as well. So I'm sure when he found out about his uh, oh, the best. sexual persuasion, he was fucking made up. Old Jimmy Helwig. Um, <laughs> But it yeah. looks like he <laughs> suffered so much psychic damage. That, that was, this is fucking awful. That, that was uh, 
Well, oh, it can be Troy and Faye now because, like, you're also suffering. What, what are oh, you going to do? This, <laughs> this is rough. <laughs> well, give, give me a moment, guys. I'm going to send you a picture of Orlando Jordan and his partners. Oh, um, I dear. mean, I'll just put it in the video version at the side. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, yeah, I'm not I, sure I, I want to see this. I, I need us to see Faye's reaction to it live and live in colour. Oh, um, God. While we're doing that, Troy, do you want to... Um, lead into the next piece of news i mean anything's got to be better than what we please just please just like get um, that out of my head what are we doing in the rest of the world eh? yeah is that what yeah. we got yeah uh <laughs> so ddp uh diamond dallas page the generous lovely lovely man that he is uh donated ten thousand dollars to help the family of the late great ice train uh harold Hogue. um numerous other uh wrestlers from around the world uh donated um but yeah ddp did a pretty cool thing um so for those that don't know um ice train uh broke into the business in early 90s he was in wcw for a couple of years uh was in catch wrestling association went back to wcw um and he was best known for his tag team with scott norton uh fire and ice yes Scott Norton, yes. baby. That's it. Um, but yeah, a GoFundMe page was set up um, to help his family uh, in his tragic passing uh, the other week. Uh, and yeah, I say DDP uh, donated ten thousand uh, dollars. Chris Jericho, Mick Foley, Cody Rhodes, um, also among um, some of those that donated. So yeah, really, really nice. Uh, I will drop a link to the GoFundMe page uh, in the description here. Uh, but yeah, lovely, lovely gesture. Um, what else have we got? Rest of the world. Chris Jericho is working on a film with the author uh, of the Walking Dead books, um, Jay Bonansinger, I believe his name is, uh, on a new film called Self Storage. Uh, mm. I've got the article here. I will find it. Give you a wee bit of detail. <clears throat> um, yeah, Chris Jericho's new project is in the works. Um, I say teaming with the Walking Dead author. Uh, it's a psychological thriller called Self Storage. Uh, Deadline reported that the movie is based on uh, a 2006 novel of the same name with the lead character of John Fitzgerald, um, who is slated to be played by Lou Temple. Um, yeah, not too much. Of, I mean, if, if you've read the novel, you know what it's about. I haven't personally. Um, but if you have, then you'll know what it's about. Um, so it but says yeah, here. Chris, Chris Jericho movie- is going to executively produce it. Um, and the plot is the movie centers on a heroin addicted father and his son who accidentally lock themselves inside a self storage unit. Brilliant. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sold. Yeah. Hope Chris <laughs> um, Jericho like appears like as himself, just being a demon. I mean, but he does look a bit like a heroin addict these days. <laughs> oh, to be wow. fair. Well, um, other, other heroin addicts are available. Um, <laughs> uh, and the last little bit I've got here for the rest of the world uh, Mick Foley is apparently training for one last death match to celebrate his 60th birthday um, yeah. this came out uh, a couple of days ago um, but yeah just thinking about one last return to the ring um, it's not wrestled since the 2012 Royal Rumble um, has made numerous appearances uh, for WWE, but yeah. not in ring. I know he recently appeared at, was it an ICW show or something? GCW. Uh, done that was well. it GCW? That yeah, was yeah. Uh, ICW No Holds Barred. He, that was it. Uh, double arm DDT'd John Wayne Murdoch in their match. That um, was cool. So it looks like he could be teasing that's going to be John Wayne Murdoch. But he said uh, in... Rabbit, Rabbit there was a, there was uh, an interview of him on Folia's pod. Um, he stated that he's thinking about losing weight and doing one more match. He said, 60's right around the corner. Thinking of doing one final match on my 60th birthday, a death match. I'm not kidding. I think it would be a great incentive to drop those 100 big ones. I think it might be fun. Um, that was the last yeah. Folia's pod as well. Like, there's no yeah. more of them. Yeah. Uh, um, I think it would be a pretty gory spectacle. I'm just thinking about it. Uh, I've put it out there to two of my kids and they're like, would you get hurt? And I was like, yeah, probably. 
<laughs> a lot of people are pushing for it to be John Moxley, aren't they on Twitter? Yeah. I I sure as shit am. Yeah, me too. Um I'd like that. Uh he did go on to say actually, um he said when asked if he had a dream opponent in mind, he said Moxley or Matt Cardona. I think Moxley would be the easiest, but Matt has the heat in the deathmatch world that could really make something cool. Yeah, that'd be good. That'd be good. Yeah. Um for some reason, Messenger is not letting me well, send. It's, it's cause messenger's it's been image. messenger's been odd all day. I've so, had it where I've opened up a message and it's just not showing anything. Don't, don't, don't worry, worry about, about it. It's don't. the case, Damon. I've just sent you it on Discord. I believe. Oh. Uh, no. I'll send it you now, Troy, so you can. Oh, you get please, to see. please, please do, Jay. Thank you so much. So don't worry, much. Mate. I got it's you. What we, it's what we need, us clearly. What a what a prick. Oh fucking hell! Uh, there, we <laughs> <laughs> uh, there we go, Troy. Um, that, that was evil bisexual on Orlando Jordan with his two his two life partners. What? Oh, what the um, fuck, man! <laughs> yeah, I know. That that's how that's how uh, Hulk Hogan sees bisexual people. Why? Is it, um, why does the guy on the on the right look like he's in fucking Pretty Deadly? Yeah. Um, nah. There's a distinct lack of um, what's it called? Game Arm blouse. Sleeves. Game blouse. <laughs> there, there is a distinct lack of game blouses. Um, so just before we wrap this up, shall we? Uh, should we have a little speculation on some AEW? Obviously, this week. Um, yeah. First and foremost, Hangman vs Swerve three. Who you got? Swerve. I, I wanted to oh, Swerve. No, no, Hangman. And then I, I think, think Hangman because Swerve can make a compelling case to make that a triple threat if Hangman wins. Yeah, Hang, so I think Hangman can't. Yeah, here's what I'm thinking: Hangman wins, goes on to Revolution, beats Joe, and loses it immediately to Swerve in the next match. Oh, I tell you what they could do if they do the it's Casino Battle up. Royal at um Revolution. At Revolution. Oh, yeah, they swear do the face of the resolution ladder match, don't they? Shit, they do. Yeah. I've swear win that and cash it in on Hangman. Straight away. Just oh, straight oh, away. Yeah. Fucking do Just it. Fucking crime, Hangman. because uh, I love Hangman's, seeing my boy suffer. Hangman's a fucking cop. He stole Prince and Anna's weed and gave it to RVD. Um, <laughs> Mate, oh, we saw RVD in the year of our Lord 2024 have a fairly decent match. It I was so good. Banger. He's yeah, been man. having some great matches great. in AEW. Oh. He had a boss match against Jack Perry as well. Did you see did you see his little run he had in Noah uh, in 2022? No, I didn't. No. no. He, he had a match with Ninja Mac and it was fucking mental. I heard about <laughs> that. It was like, what's happening? Why is RVD having a banger in Japan? Um, <laughs> but also, uh, let's talk about... Uh, Obviously, Tony Khan has announced a huge announcement. Uh, he's getting he's better announced an announcement. <laughs> he, he's, he, he's getting he's getting better with these. Where usually it is something that's genuinely quite big nowadays. Like last time, yeah. it was obviously the Continental Classic. Um, I believe prior to that, it was it wasn't all in, was it? There was something else before that, nah, or sorry. after that. Sorry. Um, well, e- either way, he. He he's he's been quite good at like making not, them big. Yeah, not not like just like going. I've got a huge announcement. I've just got a great deal on my car insurance. Um, Literally, like. So, I, I <laughs> he's gonna I be in a Geico advert one day, and he's gonna do that. So that's gonna happen. Poked up to his eyeballs, like sending angry. <laughs> out the um. Uh... So so <laughs> I, I I I genuinely think this might be Mercedes money. Or Ricardo, yeah. Um, or alternatively, both. it's just Tony coming out in a suit and made him money, and then like they both walk Tony, out with him. Tony comes <laughs> out dressed as Ricardo. Alternatively, I do think there's a possibility it could be Osprey's first match for Revolution, which would be at Revolution. Still, don't mm. think that's a huge announcement. I wouldn't though. say it's a huge. Yeah, I mean it is, but it, you you don't it, announce that you're going to announce that in a few weeks. Something like. You just announced that. I think it's bigger yeah. than that. I, I think it's I think it's because we already know Osprey's coming, so like exactly he's already signed. 
Yeah. It, he can rock could, up any time. They don't need to announce that he's going to he, have a match. He could do the old uh, Undertaker Triple H announcement thing, where obviously when um, like everyone thought Sting was debuting in WWE, and uh, I want to say it was 2011, and then Undertaker walked out, and everyone was like, "Oh shit, okay." <laughs> and like immediately Triple H walked out and like they both just stared at the WrestleMania stand. He could do that. Yeah. Mm. Just have a stare, just have a stare down. Just just go, oh, yeah. Here's a card of versus our spray have fun kids. Um, <laughs> <laughs> See you next week. <laughs> See, I, I again, right. And I think I'm a bit jaded over a card or an Osprey now because it's just happened so many times. Yeah. That last and last one, time, sorry. like I was about to say, and last time it was the G1 and it was incredible. Oh, no, no. Last time it was Battle in the Valley. Oh, Battle in the Valley, yeah. And it was fucking amazing. But so, <laughs> it was, was, so was the arguably, G1. Yeah, arguably one of the better ones they've done. They did that reversal of the Rainmaker into a fucking Spanish fly. Yeah. Which was just scatty. Um, yeah. I, I, I think either way, it's got to be... I feel like it's got to be a big debut, hasn't it? Yeah. Mm. Or, or alternatively, they might... I've seen a lot of people speculating on this that they might announce kind of similar to the way they did like Punk's debut where they announced them a big show. Ah. Uh, when's Beach and Break? It, That's like June, isn't it? No, no. It's usually January. Is it? But then they, they fucking they pick and choose. Like that. Um, they've, they've not got any dates set from, from past, I believe, the end of March. Yeah, because they just felt like the fallout of Revolution, in. haven't they? Um, no, no. From so the after after um, Revolution, they're doing a tour of Canada. Oh, okay. Yeah. When's so Revolution that, again? Early March. Third of March. Uh, first, so. first weekend of March. Yeah. Um, so there's every possibility that it might be the Owen Hart tournament. <clears throat> that's that early. That Canada. though. Yeah, but they just do it to coincide with the tour of Canada. Oh, fair. Makes sense. Um, it, it there's there's also every possibility it could be something like along the lines of saying I don't know oh we're gonna run the TD Garden in um, Boston which is a massive venue in Boston yeah where Mercedes Monet is from Boston mm-hmm. um like yeah. it could be something like that um yeah. I, I I I'm more leaning towards that it's probably gonna be a card or a Monet um I wouldn't be surprised if they announced it could just be something like a new pay per view or something like that that they announced and then. Mm. Oh, is too many? Like, <laughs> they're doing more this year though aren't they well yeah they did the I TV mean deal, I, I think it kind of it was okay at first like with Re- Adam Wrestle Dream I was okay with that World's End I was a it was a bit not disappointing it was fine just felt rough anticlimactic no it, it wasn't even anticlimactic it's just it, just it was just average it was just fine yeah, yeah. it was it, it was just like the thing with AEW is with the pay per views, they hit it out the park every yeah. time. And this was the from, first apart one. from World's End. And it, that's that's not to say it was a bad pay per view at all. No, it wasn't. It, but the standards was, are already just, fairly high. Yeah, yeah. So like when you think when it's you like think the best of like, worst problem to have, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Like, but when you think when they when they like used to do four pay per views a year. You'd know every single one of those four pay per views would be absolutely fucking awesome, or at least have two or three matches on that you go, "Fuck me, that was one of the best things I've ever seen." Mm. Mox and awesome. Eddie though at Rest- uh, World's End was oh. fucking amazing. M- so MJF, good. MJF, and um, Samoa Joe and Joe was yeah the the eight man tag with all the guys from the uh, Continental Classic, yeah, except for Andrade. Really. Is yeah. the is the worry that you feel the quality might be diluted with the increase of pay per views? Um, I don't know. I think, I think it's more a case of when they when they're given time to like, like space in between them. Mm-hmm. You know, That's what I think. you know the rest. You know the wrestlers are going to kind of like go. Oh, it's a big show. Let's go all out. Mm. Whereas, if there's, there's one every other week. If there's um, one every like other week, they might not phone it in, but you know they might like not. They might go. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm quite happy to just have a match that's like a seven out of ten instead of. See, but then see, we had that with All In, and All In was fucking boss, and there was literally like days apart. 
But then do they mm-hmm. do they not could they not go the other way with that and use those newer pay-per-views to maybe put a spotlight on some of the talent that wouldn't make it onto what they consider their big four? Hopefully, so the, big four, the big four doing. remain and, the big four, if you like, and they have your marquee mm-hmm. matches on. But then maybe these yeah. other ones highlight some of the slightly lesser used talent. Yeah, I'd like that. I mean, to be fair, one thing they did do quite well with spacing out the pay per views was that MJF didn't defend the world title on all of them. Mm. Yeah, so he didn't. They had like um, uh, all out. The main event was Mox and Orange Cassidy for the international championship. So good. And because they built the international championship up as much as they have, mm. it still felt like a big deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they, same with uh, Christian and Darby for the TNT Championship in the main event of WrestleDream. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, MJF, MJF was on the pre-show defending the ROH tag titles. Um, Although, saying that, was that match made main event because Adam Copeland was debuting? If he wasn't debuting then, would that have been the main event? I think yeah, it still could have they, been. They've okay. been building that for... Um, they've been building that since, like, before. Yeah. Okay, Literally. fair enough. It, yeah, literally since before all in. So it was like, okay, that's. In fact, it was since the first episode of Collision, wasn't it? Even building yeah. that ages. Yeah. So yeah, it was. It was quite a. It. it like, even further than that, since Nick Wayne had debuted as well. Like when you think about it. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah, it was. It, if they did it that way, where they kind of didn't necessarily have to have a world title on the main event, they could just have a marquee match on there and that's mm. the way to do it mm. yeah but then the, the problem they've got is is there's always going to be that temptation to have like like the big guys on it all all the time like danielson's going to be on all of them mox is going to be on all of them so then it it does kind of shift away from that opportunity that we want it that we'd want to see happen if that was spread out but then mm. i do think as well with like a lot of the names coming in, maybe that's and maybe that's what they'll think. And maybe it's like, well, we can actually we can actually like have like a marquee show without any real like big title matches on or like one or two big title matches. Yeah. Everything else can be like storylines. Other stuff can like kind of like overlap that pay per view and go to the one after. Yeah. Um yeah. It I and mean you get, it's, like, you, it's you a lovely luxury call, like... to have, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, and you could even put like the main, like the lesser main guys on the main events of like your beach breaks, your fighter fests, your stuff like that as well. Like those, like not pay per views, but like they feel TV like it. specials. Like like, like yeah. winter is coming is a big deal, even though mm-hmm. it's not a pay per view. Like, and you could, you know what I mean? Like big things happen on that show. Grand, Grand Slam should be a pay per view. Yeah, yeah. Uh, as should first yeah. dance. Yeah. Well, no, first fair, fair dance was just punks baby. Has it not been? Look. I'm sure it's been first dance since, though, hasn't it? Did no, you not do it then? Just the ones, yeah. That, that no, was just the, for the best. Miserable bollocks as debut. Sorry, Alice. <laughs> um, um, right, so um, let's let's move on to some something I'm going to trial for this. Uh, obviously, we haven't done a podcast at all in January, so I'm going to be a little bit more broad than what I'd normally be. What's a match that you've watched in the last month that you think the other two of us haven't that we should check out? And that can be our homework. Um, I'll start because you guys look like you're thinking and I've kind yeah. of just sprung this on you. Um, <laughs> Josh Alexander versus Will Ospreay from TNA. Uh, I put it on Discord. It's it's on the YouTube. It's fucking incredible. Uh, first episode of TNA Impact this year that they ran. As TNA, um, and it, Melter gave it five point five stars, which is officially the highest rated or Melter rated match in TNA history. I don't normally listen to Melter's ratings all that much. I like to form my own opinion. It more than lives up to the hype. It was fucking silly good. Um, one of the one of the best like hope spots I've ever seen with like a count out, uh, where like. Osprey hit like a fucking tiger bomb off the apron through a table through a table. Josh Alexander didn't move to like the nine, just just got in. Um nice. yeah. And then also one of the coolest reversals to the hidden blade I've ever seen as well. 
Oh, yeah. And a very and a very good Stormbreaker reversal. Um, yeah, just really good complement of styles. Um, that takes them to one one. Osprey's already pretty much said like he's gonna speak to Tony Khan about being able to go back to TNA to do the third match. Um, right. Yeah, it's it's on their YouTube. It's free to watch. It's fucking great. It's it's unreal. Kind of gutted Osprey didn't sign for TNA, if I'm being honest. <laughs> wow. Um, okay. Uh, I haven't watched all that much just because I've been busy filming it, but I can recommend a match yeah. that I filmed that was pretty good, although you won't be able to watch yeah. it yet because I'm still editing it. <laughs> Fuck's sake, <laughs> Troy. <laughs> well, I'll have it finished you... within like 24 hours and I'll send you the link. You can send it over to us once you're it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, it was from SWW who did a show down in Bristol on Sunday. Uh, and it was a Falls Count Anywhere for the SWW Heavyweight Championship. Uh, and it was Chris Bronson against Toby St. John. Uh, yeah, it was it was silly fun. They were fighting in the bar, in the toilet, on the merch table. Um, How difficult was that to film? I was going to say, uh, I bet that was fun to film. It was, it was real fun to film. I just kind of hooked myself up onto the bar in a, a squiffy angle uh, and then followed them <laughs> into the toilet. I would have seen that. I, 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 was hoping you, I was hoping you were going to say it wasn't my problem. I was hard come. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, no, I was the sole ringside photographer, uh, uh, videographer. Mm. So, yeah. Um, but no, that, that, that was a really fun match. Um, yeah, when yeah. I finished it, I'll, I'll send it over. It was good. Good laugh. Sounds good. Hey, what you got? Um, I, I'm gonna go with Pudding Jordan Oliver. I, I, I mean, I literally was trying to tee you up for that. Like <laughs> honestly, like you probably like had a thing like, oh god, now I need to think of something. No, yeah, no, Pudding Jordan Oliver. Yeah. Oh my god, like I didn't. That is available on demand progress, I believe. Is that right? It is, yeah. Mm-hmm. And please just go and watch it. I think, I think there's like codes floating around where you can get like free trials yeah. and stuff. Um, but. That match, oh my god, it was a masterpiece. And Pud on his debut to have that match is mm. fucking massive. Mm. We, we spoke to Jordan Oliver uh, after the show, didn't we? <laughs> he um, didn't know Pud was seventeen the only, until yeah, he only after, found the out match. after the match. Pud was only seventeen. Like, <laughs> wait, <what? laughs> um, yeah. You beat Patrick, up a child. What are you doing? Yeah. And Patrick <laughs> Quinlan's gonna have a fucking banging year. So yeah, Chris. Yeah. Quince Essentials are going to have a fucking great year this they year. They are. They are. Um, yeah. If they're on if they're on a show local to you, go your way to get to it because they're very good. Yeah. They are they're amazing. Um, and they're just oh. bloody lovely lads as well. They are yeah. sweet, sweet but boys. really are former, sweethearts. Former and probably future guests of the podcast. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Podcast before. I'll probably get them on again at some point. Um. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, okay, what about wrestlers of the... Do you want to do week or month? Because we do wrestle the week normally anyway, don't we? Yeah. But we've had like five weeks off. Yeah. <laughs> um. So what do you want to do, wrestle the month or the week? I'd say month. Do month. month, and then maybe when we get back into doing things, do week. Week, yeah. Okay. Uh, who wants to start? Because I do, I do actually start? need to think about this. I, yeah? I haven't got one offhand. Um, Brian Danielson. Clam digger. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, he's had some banger matches, but especially um I can't pronounce that guy's name from CMLL. Echicero. Yeah, yeah. Um he had an amazing match. Um, El- on, on collision. Uh, Sabre Jr. Yeah. Um yeah. Yeah. So, uh yeah. He- Echicero is silly fucking good. Um I am going to say, and I feel like this might end up being like a reoccurring thing, but from what I've seen of him so far, uh, I'm just going to... I know what you're going to say. Oh, what am I going to say? Go on. Gringo Loco. Oh, no. Okay. All right. Uh, I've seen like three really good Gringo Loco matches this month. I was like, yeah, okay. Gringo's Daniel fucking Garcia smashed. is another one as well. Garcia's had a very good month. Um, yeah. As have thought- happened- I thought you were going to say Mustafa Ali. Ooh. Uh, while he has had some very good matches, I haven't seen them all. 
So ah, fair, fair. His match with Gringo um, Loco though, was very good. His mm. match with Leon Slater was phenomenal. It was mm, so good at um, progress. Yeah, phenomenal. Again, th- there you go, right? Whoever's listening, sign up to Progress Plus, free trial, whatever. Watch Pud and Jordan Oliver. Watch the Thunder Bastard match. Um, watch Harley Hudson's debut against Rio for the Progress Women's Champion. And watch Leon Slater and Mustafa Ali. Oh, and Grizzled and Young Vets versus Sunshine Machine. Yeah. I, I, I was, I was going to say both Grizzled Young Vets because... Uh... They won the Wrestling Revolver Tag Championships they and they did. also look like they're going to win the TNA World Tag, Tag Championships. They're, they're doing, Mox they're and Gringo doing... Loco meant to have a really good match that I need to watch as well. Oh, it was fucking excellent. That, there was just a shot. Mox had like a, a board with like loads of plastic forks. <laughs> oh, I saw yeah. that. That was yeah. And he, he pulled it out the ring and he was just grinning like a fucking He looked kid. delighted. He found like a box of sweets or something. Um <laughs> And then he put it in the ring and Gringo base bombed him onto it and it was dead upsetting. Um yeah, Troy, who who've who have you got then? Uh from the two matches I saw, I'd say Mustafa Ali. But I I think I feel like that's gonna be a reoccurring thing in the same with you and, and Gringo Loco, just seeing some of the matches he's got teed up over the next few weeks and months. I mean, this weekend he's wrestling in a fatal four way against Vikingo, Gringo Loco and Penta, which Fucking I need, hell. I need to find it. I don't think the company films. Oh, what? So it might just be a case of like getting a fucking bootleg from someone. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's that's old school, that isn't it? Find like, someone that's going to the show, chuck them chuck them 20 quid and road, just chuck your phone up on a tripod for me and send it over. Yeah. Ali's been quite good though. If there's matches that he feels like might be hard for like people to watch, he's been quite good at um putting them on his uh Twitter, YouTube. Mm. So the, I know he put there. He had a match with uh, Eagle Blank. I think I probably butchered that. Uh, French Luchador. Um, right. Yeah, that his first match back was against him, and he he added up on like his Twitter like the day after. Nice. So I think if it's if it's hard for people to kind of track down, he's been doing a good job of sharing it. Um. Sweet. Yeah. Uh, um. Who, who should we have for like the kind of the. The, the fourth pick. We always rock hard, Juice Robinson. Rock rock <laughs> hard, Board Robinson. Yeah. Okay. Um, I I was gonna say just because Juicy is near Jay White. Oh yeah, that that can work. Yes. Also, Bang Bang Gang got new music and it absolutely fucks. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Um, cool. Well, that's a. Uh, there, there we go, guys. Uh, also, shout out to the Ass Boys because they're doing good work as well, and they got the same new music. <laughs> um, yeah, that's uh, been the podcast. Thank you very much for listening to us and us being back. Um, anything? Uh, where, where are you going to be this weekend, Troy? Any shows? Uh, no, I'm at a wedding on Sunday. I've got a weekend off. <laughs> hey, uh, the weekend after I'm at Sovereign Pro, who have got Les Batsby and. F- Fuck me, there's some plans for him. Poor boy. What you what what we should be looking forward to is RPZ and Rory Coyle in mm. that in that um in that match at Sov Pro. Um, yeah, I'm the last one they had. Down myself. Well, the last the last one that he had. No, uh, Rory Coyle was like the the special guest director. Yeah. It was a like a final cut match that was. Can't Rory wait. Coyle is outstanding. Yeah. Yeah. He's such an underrated wrestler. Uh, for his character where we did the uh, what that watch along of him versus Eddie Kingston, didn't we from North? Mm. And Eddie Kingston or Anagi them onto a fucking VCR. It was awful. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the most upsetting things I've ever seen in my life. Um, <laughs> I'm hey, at, um go this weekend, don't you? Yeah, I'm at OTP off the page in Warrington on Saturday. Um that's gonna be very good because all the Quinlands and VGS are on it. Um yeah. and there's some other good matches too. Um and on the Sunday I'm at Wrestle Island and we got the Wrestle Island Rumble and I'm so excited. It's gonna be so I, good. I may also be at Wrestle Island if I can manage to squeeze it in. Uh, yeah. I've got a very busy weekend as I was complaining to you about. Uh, was it on Sunday? Sunday wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. On Saturday we got Pud versus Lantravera. 
which is going to be nice. unbelievable. Oh, podcast well, favourites. I'm, yeah. I'm annoyed about that because I definitely can't do Saturday because I'm recording Two Nations Under Ted. Well, I'll just uh, have a burger in your honour. It's fine. Thanks, thanks friend. Um, <laughs> it, it, make sure you do it in Joe's honour as well because he'll be with me at least. I will. Um, I will. Yeah, a- any Ted Lasso fans out there, quick cheeky plug for me. Uh, two Nations <laughs> Under Ted. Uh, me, Joe from Damn It Vince and Hallmark Greatness and Tom Clark, friends, all friends of the podcast, just chatting away about Ted Lasso. It's always fun. It's very uh, funny. I think... What was the what was the last one we put up? It was the one after Beards Night Out. So oh, yeah, we're that. almost at the end of we're almost at the end of season two, um, and then we're about to start season three, I believe, this weekend. So yeah, we're we're in the final stretch now, guys. Oh, uh, wow. But yeah, do check it out, please, and all their other podcasts as well as all the other shit that we do. Um, we're hoping to get more and more stuff on the channel on both YouTube and podcasts, wherever podcasts are available. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, thank you for joining us and we will catch you on the next one. Bye. Bye. Taddy, bye.